Okay, we're going to get into uh, taking the high pressure cylinders off. Uh, the first step listed here is to, on the operator interface, touch the maintenance symbol to open the primary maintenance screen. So we're down here. Press this button. The next piece is to touch this symbol to open the move the plunger screen. Okay, now touch the motor symbol to start the motor. Well, in order to do that, I've got it controlled by our HMI, so I have to go over and turn the bypass feature on. So we're going to go to setup, no advanced setup, sunrise. Okay, now we're going to go to bypass over here. And we want to do jet feedback. Okay, come back over here. should be able to turn this. Now we can start the motor. Okay, the motor's running. And now we need to touch the cylinder mover and transfer our plunger to the end you would we'll be working on. We're gonna try this end, the left. right here so 13 16 on here adjustable wrench on the output adapter and we're going to loosen it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take this high pressure line off on the attenuator underneath.
And now we're going to try and pull out this check valve. Just kind of wiggling on it lightly. Okay, we got it out of there. Looks like that. And then we can pull the high pressure cylinder off of the plunger. And it says make sure that the spacer tube does not fall out. Dropping the spacer tube can cause damage to it. So inside of this there is another tube. Now pulling that high pressure cylinder off isn't exactly just grab it and pull. It does stick pretty good. Now I'm going to try to pry this cylinder away from the center section. You got to be gentle. Ideally you'd have brass or plastic to pop that off so you don't damage the surfaces. Okay, so I was using a thin screwdriver just pushing with my hand. I never never took a hammer to it, but you can see there's a little bit of a lip here. I've already pulled it away some. Okay, it's starting to come away from the end cap of the hydraulic cylinder. You can see the ceramic rod in there. Okay, now that I've got it that far off, I can see the spacer tube wants to come out. And we can pull that out so we don't lose it on the floor. Okay, this is the hydraulic end of the high pressure cylinder that I There's the static, dynamic. Now we're going to repair the high pressure cylinder, the check valve, and the low pressure pop-in. So here we got the seal locator tool, and then we got the high pressure cylinder with the seal on the bottom, setting it on top, center it over the piece, and we're going to drop this spacer tube back in. Okay, now we're going to get the push tool over here. In this bag. Okay, the push tool is inside the cylinder on the spacer tube, and we're going to tap on the top of this with a mallet. You may want to make sure that the high pressure cylinder can't fall off. And we're going to push that seal and hoop out the bottom. So I pulled the spacer tube out, got the cylinder here, and there is the uh, seal. Two pieces here. And then the brass piece. Okay, first I'm just shoving some paper all the way through it to wipe it clean and get it dry. I'm just going to hold each end of the paper towel and roll it back and forth on the desk here. Remember when working on this stuff, the cleaner the environment the better. Not, don't have something that's got garnet all over it and whatnot. That'll just grind it up when you put it back together. Okay, we're going to take a little scotch pad here. We're going to tear it and put a little bit in each end of the cylinder with our thumbs. We're going to stick our thumbs in the end then with the scotch brite and we'll just roll it back and forth on the desk to polish that up near the ends. And for cleaner, it works great to use an alcohol. Isopropyl or denatured. Clean that out after you polish it up. Okay, so we got the high pressure cylinder all cleaned up. Now we're going to go into the check valve and we're going to use an eighth inch hex wrench to remove the low pressure poppet screw from the check valve. This guy. We'll get that. Okay, here's the check valve. I took the screw out. You can see there's a hole in the middle of it. It's not just a standard screw. So don't lose it. But you will get a new one with the kit. Okay, we'll pull this off. And then you got this. Okay. Those are all the parts. Uh, the poppets in here, right there. Okay, now we're going to get the lapping stone and some lapping paper taped on it, and then we can lap this check valve on the face. You want to make sure your paper stays flat in storage, not that you bend it and kink it, or you have to cut that out. So we got it taped onto the stone, 
it's nice and flat, smooth, taped on the other end, so it won't wrinkle up. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is put the check valve face and the low, or the low pressure poppet face uh, a flat on the lapping paper and move it back and forth using light pressure until the face is smooth and flat and has a mirror-like finish. We don't want to rock the parts or use too much pressure. Doing so can cause damage to the part and you want to keep the low pressure poppet and the poppet retainer clean. Okay. Do not put grease or lubricant on the check valve face or in the cylinder bore. These components are designed for dry contact. So here's the check valve face. See there's three holes there. We're going to put it on here, standing up, and we're going to make figure eights lightly going back and forth until it's a mirror-like finish. And there it is. It doesn't take too much. Pop it has two sides to it. That side we don't lap, but this side we can lap doing the same thing. Okay, so that is lapped. Now we can put that back together. Here we're going to put that check valve back together. We got this disc or spacer, sorry, put that on here. And then we got the pop it. Pop it has two different sides to it. You got to put that into the into the uh, holder there. See that? Now we got to put it back on the face of the check valve and screw the right put the screw in the right hole. Okay, we got it back together, and you can kind of see the poppet is inside. And you just want to make sure if you tip it over that it's falling and moving. Then you know everything is, it's not hanging up and there's no burrs or something causing a problem. Okay, here's the output adapter, that's the high pressure poppet. Inside here is the seat. You kind of got to pick that out of there. And the poppet may not just want to fall out of the adapter. Let's see here, yeah, it fall, fell out. Okay, so when you're looking for things that might be wrong, you got to look at this chamfer here. If you have an overstroke alarm, that chamfer seals against the seat in there. And if that can leak, it's gonna come out and drip down the weep hole or spray. Also, the face of the poppet, if there's grooves in it, and then the seat the same. And then also, once you get the seat out, look at the back on the check valve to see if there's grooves there. Because the water, it, it would leak out this weep pole. Now this is the seat as it came out. You can see there's a difference in the two sides. The wide end has to go into the check valve. The chamfered side faces the output adapter. We're gonna put a little blue goop on both sides of this seat for high pressure and also on the threads of the output adapter.
you can see there's a deeper cavity here pipe threads into on that end it's all one unit now seal removal tool goes inside over the ceramic rod and it threads on to the seal housing okay pull this out you can see the assembly that we've pulled out to get to the energized spring seal we gotta take a snap ring out of here see that? Now you can see the energized spring seal has two sides to it, spring side and just plastic. We're going to put this plastic side down and the spring side up. Now the spring seal, it's got to go down to that shoulder in the bottom. It doesn't want to just push in real easy. Let's try and get that in there without damaging it. So we're going to use the seal insertion tool here. It's the right size to tap that down in there. Okay, now we've got it pushed in and we can take this brass piece. And this is appearing to be reversible. Same on all sides, drop that in. And then we got to put the snap ring back on. Inside there, make sure that sits in the groove. Actually, we're going to replace the backup seal and the O-ring on here because they came in the kit. And that's what these are. Now, the O-ring has a backup seal or a backup. You can very see a concave there. It's radius. That has to go toward the o-ring and the flat side goes on towards the wide end so the con concave towards the o-ring the flat side toward the, the larger diameter on this seal housing now we put high vacuum grease on here but what happens is it likes to roll as you're putting it on so you got to make sure when you get it down in the groove that it's rolled the right way so the concave is facing up towards the o-ring. Okay, now it's completely together, rebuilt, and ready for us to slide back in on the plunger. Now when we put this seal housing in, you can see there's a weep hole here, and it's on that end. We want that down. I've also cleaned inside of this hosing, wiped it, wiped the rod, and there's actually another weep hole down there. That's, that's our indicator if we have a hydraulic or water leak. Now we're just going to push this in on that ceramic rod until we feel it click. That means the seal has engaged inside the hosing. <clears throat> okay, then we can unscrew it. check that our weep hole is on the bottom and if not we'll adjust it we can put the tool back on if we can't turn it by hand okay okay now we're going to put the cartridge assembly here into the seal housing installation tool just like that I left the plastic that comes with it inside the housing cartridge okay now we're gonna put that onto the ceramic rod we're gonna 
push with both hands, the cartridge and the tool onto the plunger in a smooth motion. And we push until the cartridge is touching the seal housing. Back inside, back, back in here. Okay. This might go kind of tough, so you gotta give it some force. Two hands. Okay, it's on there. There's a part, that little plastic piece that stayed inside the seal installation tool. You can see it's inside there. But they're also saying to make sure that you don't have any pieces hanging down. So when you look at the ceramic rod, you want to make sure everything looks concentric and in place. Here's the spacer tube. Kind of want to look this over if there's any abnormalities to it. Maybe it, this hole is oblong, or if it didn't come off and out of the cylinder very easy, you may want to look at replacing that because then it's probably heated up and been stretched or deformed. It should come in or go into the cylinder, the high pressure cylinder, easily and slide on the ceramic rod nice. Okay, there's the spacer tube and slid onto the plunger. Now I'm trying to push the high pressure cylinder on. It's not quite all the way in. There is a, a bushing around this, plastic bushing, and then there's a seal in there. And it's, it's a pretty good stick, hard to push on. I'm going to see if we can put the end cap on here and use the nuts to drive it in to the uh, hydraulic center section end cap once we get that far. The next step here is to put the check valve in the end of the high pressure cylinder and make sure that the weep hole faces down toward the ground. And now I'm going to clean up the high pressure end cap and slide it back onto the studs. The high pressure cylinder end cap is slid on, check valves inside, and now we're going to go ahead and tap. Um, use the rubber mallet to tap the exposed part of the check valve into the cylinder until the cylinder is fully seated in the end of the hydraulic end cap. So we're going to hit on here so that we can get this cylinder to seat all the way inside. Okay, it's all the way in. Now we're going to put some white lithium grease on here, put the nuts back on, and do a crisscross pattern torquing it at 50 foot-pound increments at a time until we hit 275 foot-pounds. Okay. okay, they're back on and torqued. We'll hook up the low-pressure water line here. It's got a little button there you push down to let the water out, or the hose out. snaps in and put our high pressure line back on going down in to the attenuator underneath and then we can uh, power it up.